In this video, we're going to have a look at some of the new updates that have come out as part of the February updates for Power BI, including things like the changes that they made to the page navigator, some formatting changes and updated themes, and some changes to the metrics visual. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So typically we don't get a lot of feature updates in January, presumably because of the holiday season. The team does make it up by cramming most of the features in February, so there's a lot to cover, so let's jump right into it. The first thing is the ability to conditionally format your values based on strings. So this capability extends the already robust way to control rules when you use uh, conditional formatting options. So now when you select rules, you have the option to choose first or last in the summarization area, which allows you to then type texts as part of your rules. In this example, we are using the text audio to change the color of the bars in the bar charts. And before this, we would typically use a DAX measure to set the rules ourselves, but this new addition makes it easier to implement to those that are not too familiar with writing DAX code. You can now see Smart Narratives as an optional visual header on top of your visual contents. Now, Smart Narratives is a feature that was released a while ago, and it uses AI to summarize the data feed to show it to you in a natural language format, making it easier to interpret the charts, and I already covered this in a separate video. This month, you now have the option to have this as a tooltip for your visual. This saves a lot of space on your report page and it lets you use it against more visuals on your page. I am just curious how the smart narratives will change as you slice and dice your data within your page. So I'll maybe have a look at recovering smart narratives again in the future. You can now adjust image height and size individually within your table. So it's handy for those that are using images within your tables and having some spacing or layout issues. You can now easily update a current theme with a single click. Updating your current base theme allows you to take advantage of the many changes and updates that the Power BI team releases to visuals and reports. And speaking of themes, there are four new accessible themes available to choose from within the themes pane. Accessible report themes have a good contrast in colors between the text and the background to help make your reports usable for those that are, let's say, colorblind or part of sight. You can now add indentations to your text box visuals. There will be a new icon for it on the pop-up menu, or you can simply use tab or shift tab to use it. You can now finally customize which pages you want to show in your page navigators. Now, this is a feature that I covered a while back and it essentially is a way to create dynamic in-page navigation without having to recreate them on each page. The only criticism that I had when this feature was released is that it didn't have too much control over what pages are being shown. Now with this update, you can now choose to show or hide tooltip pages or to toggle to show or hide individual pages if you wanted to, which is great because I might want to show certain hidden pages, but not everything. Maybe I want to hide the tooltip pages. So this added degree of control is super useful. Sensitivity labels are now supported in PDF exports. Now, this is a feature that ensures your org policies on how to handle classified data is enforced across other platforms. If you're using sensitivity labels when you export your reports to a PDF, they will now inherit any of the rules that you apply in your reports. It is curious though that this feature only works if you export to PDF from Pardia Desktop, not the service. So this is a distinction to be aware of if you're using sensitivity labels. Rollable Security also got an update this month. They've created an easy drop-down interface for users to manage your roles. Previously, you had to write logic yourself in DAX, and typically they're not too complicated, but it can be daunting, especially if you don't use DAX frequently. Now, you have the option to switch to edits to either DAX or the default editor, which allows you to either write it in DAX or a visual interface to create your logics. Rollable Security is a feature that allows you to create security roles that only have access to certain sections of your data, 
based on the rules that you're applying. So if you want to know more about this, I covered it in a separate video already. They've added two new DAX functions this month, the Linest and Linest X, which allows you to perform linear regression calculations natively within DAX. So I'll have a go at trying to cover these two functions in a separate video in the future. Now, moving on to the Power BI service. They've now streamlined the Get Data page, which is something that they planned to do back in December. On the Upload button, you have the option to get data from online sources like SharePoint or OneDrive for Business, or upload your own files, even a Power BI uh, file, which you can create a report, similar to publishing it from Power BI Desktop. In the new drop-down menu, you have the option to create a new data set, which allows you to get data from an Excel, from a CSV, or paste your own data. Finally, there are new updates on the metric. They've added a compact view on the metrics to allow you to see more scorecards and metrics in a single screen. Linked metrics have also been fully shipped. This allows you to link and use metrics from other workspaces. The follow metric is also now fully working. They just changed the icon to a bell icon. And this feature basically allows you to track changes to metrics that you follow, even across multiple workspaces or scorecards. And that's really it for this month's video. So as usual, there are lots of features that came up in this month's feature update. So I didn't really cover them all, only the ones that are pretty interesting to me. I'll leave a link in the description box below so that you can read the full blog post from the Power BI team. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so nothing to do better for next time. Answer questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.